massive rail relocation project coming together. Welcome back. It is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk. And uh, you had a lot of dignitaries in Springfield for the rail relocation ribbon cutting yesterday. And uh, it's something that uh, is is really kind of showing your tax dollars at work. Now, you had uh, the, the dignitaries at the 5th and 6th Street underpass where uh, they have uh, spent millions of dollars in, in building that overpass pass for the rail and it's a it's a, a two lane rail as well it's not just one lane that's going across there uh, and it's all meant to uh, bring about a better system for Springfield uh, to, to to have a host of benefits uh, and of course your tax dollars federal state and even local have been used uh, to uh, help make this happen and it's just one little segment of the rail relocation efforts that uh, is underway and much more is to come so yesterday they had the ribbon cut ceremony and uh, you had uh, on hand uh, U.S. Senator Dick Durbin. He was there to uh, uh, herald in the infrastructure projects. Uh, and here's how that uh, went down yesterday, uh, just north of the uh, the 6th Street overpass, uh, where you've got uh, millions of tax dollars uh, that went to, to that particular project uh, here in Springfield. Last year, we uh, passed the infrastructure bill in Washington. It provided resources all across the United States. Senator Duckworth and I were determined to make sure we got our fair share. This railroad relocation project in downstate Illinois is one of the larger investments by the federal government. We're bringing these federal tax dollars home to, to the state of Illinois and, of course, to the communities to improve the economy and create jobs and a better living style for everybody in the area. This has been a project, as you've heard over and over, that I got uh, involved in when I first was elected to the House. Railroad relocation was a, a goal in Springfield that no one was able to figure out how to do. I worked with then Mayor Houston for the first project on Wabash Avenue. And since then, we've seen dramatic investments that continue to this day. This is the latest, there'll be more. Questions? What, what, what else more is there? Well, we've already announced uh, another segment that's going to be part of a $19 billion investment on the north end of town, too. So the idea is to eliminate the crossings as much as possible in the city of Springfield. That makes it safer, quieter, uh, and more efficient for the people in the city, and it really does something toward the planning of the future. This medical district is going to be the major element in the economy of central Illinois. We want to make sure it's a united campus and that all the school and uh, SIU School of Medicine and hospitals can participate. So again, that's uh, Senator Dick Durbin yesterday uh, talking an overview of sorts of the uh, millions of dollars that's been used and the millions more that's coming to Springfield for rail relocation. Uh, we've been, of course, uh, under the... Uh, construction umbrella uh, for years and a lot of people impacted by this not just you driving through Springfield and the traffic headaches that may have been caused by it uh, and this is all meant to alleviate that into the future with uh, better infrastructure but it was also uh, displacing a lot of homeowners in that area uh, and with the council roundup each and every Wednesday here with Springfield's morning news we've heard those concerns people going to the city council talking about the constructions on Barrow it's shaking their foundation or they're having trouble getting what they feel is the best value for their home if they're bought out. Well, I talked with uh, Springfield Mayor Jim Langfelder just briefly about this, uh, and he kind of laid out uh, some of uh, the, the latest kind of intricacies of uh, how that was handled and uh, what's yet to come uh, for, for the, some of those properties. Here's uh, Mayor Jim Langfelder from yesterday. Yeah, everybody's been made whole with regards to that. There's certain parameters that we've adjusted since then. Uh, and that's what it's all about is how to get feedback from uh, individuals and that's what transformed here. Uh, the railroad administration and the federal guidelines have certain parameters in place and those are set. Uh, so any reimbursement outside of the realm would be the city's responsibility. I think that's what you saw uh, unfold at city council because you do have, uh, you know, regardless of what some government entities say, the ones closest to the people the city, city government, and that's what we've heard and played out, and we made everybody whole with regards to their properties. What we're doing now is uh, taking a look at refurbishing them, you know, bring them up to a better standard, uh, because not all of them were taken care of. 
So we want to do that, and then we'll put them on the tax rolls and sell them, uh, hopefully to first-time home buyers. And so you keep that home ownership component alive in the neighborhoods. So just a little bit of insight into the properties that were impacted here in Springfield by those uh, rail relocation efforts. And uh, as you heard from Senator Dick Durbin, uh, still a lot more to come when it comes to infrastructure investments in those rail relocation efforts. Now, coming up next, we'll talk more about rail and in particular, a uh, possible consolidation that's underway uh, that's uh, raised some concerns. So we'll hear Senator Durbin Urban react to that issue and more. It's right here with Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk. So we shared some of the uh, ribbon-cutting comments that were made by U.S. Senator Dick Durbin yesterday north of the underpass that cost millions of dollars. And there was a lot of praise for political leaders from Senator Durbin to state lawmakers and even Governor J.B. Pritzker and uh, the uh, Rebuild Illinois program, but I didn't really hear explicitly expressed thanks to the taxpayers uh, for uh, having to pay double the gas tax to help fund the state side of this for uh, you know the infrastructure plan from the federal government being funded by you, the taxpayer. Uh, so there was a lot of accolades for political leaders for making things happen, but yeah, it, it's you, the taxpayer, that's ultimately paying for all of this. And I didn't really hear an explicit thank you uh, to the taxpayers uh, for for funding these things. Uh, and it's 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 the rail relocation effort's important. It's going to make sure that we have a good flow for emergency vehicles. Uh, future processes are going to be helping out the medical district in Springfield uh, and, and making sure that we don't have congestion whenever there's uh, increased rail traffic. Uh, so the rail consolidation efforts are being applauded. However, there's concern of some efforts of rail mergers. And in particular, you've got Canadian Pacific Railway and Kansas City Southern. Uh, they're looking to merge, and it's being reviewed by the Surface Transportation Board. And the concerns are that uh, this is going to increase freight traffic in parts of the state, including Chicago. Uh, so U.S. Senator Dick Durbin and several other uh, members of Congress were up north in Chicago earlier this week. But when Durbin was here in Springfield talking about rail relocation, uh, he was also asked about rail mergers, and this is uh, some of what uh, Senator Durbin had to say uh, in, in reaction to that, uh, that potential merger that's, that's under review right now uh, by uh, federal uh, regulators. Here's uh, Senator Durbin. And we're concerned about the impact of this merger on the communities next to the railroad. We want them to be sensitive to the displacement and some of the problems they're creating in suburban towns particularly. Suburban towns don't have what we have here, underpasses and overpasses. In the 20-mile stretch uh, in suburban uh, Chicago, there are 54 crossings. Uh, the notion that we're going to build some kind of diversion in all or many of them is really a challenge. And, we want the railroad to sit down with us and talk about the safest way to put this railroad together. Have, have you heard from Bartlett Grain? They have that huge grain facility in Jacksonville. They're firmly against that merger. They're going to divest the Springfield line. They can't move a thousand rail cars to Mexico full of grain anymore. Uh, if, if, if their concerns at the STB or through you been heard? No, I, I haven't heard that. I'm glad you brought it up because the STB hearing was last week, just recently. Uh, good news for us is the chairman of the Surface Transportation Board, which has the last word on the merger. Uh, at least at the execu executive level. The chairman is Marty Oberman, born in Springfield, Illinois. Marty uh, spent most of his professional life as an alderman in Chicago and then as the CEO of Metra. So he understands this from an Illinois perspective. We're hoping that he weighs in for this merger. But I want to look into that Bart McGrain thing. It's the first I've heard of it. And uh, Metra is opposing this idea. Uh, you've got Chicago media saying that uh, they uh, they don't like the idea because it could increase freight traffic and uh, that could disrupt scheduling for the commuter train there in Chicago. So uh, ongoing concerns about rail mergers. And of course, this comes what, like uh, three weeks or so after there were concerns of uh, a possible uh, strike by rail workers in their contract negotiations. Uh, and 
and and all of this to highlight just how vastly important our rail system is here in the United States. Uh, and it's an interesting uh, public-private partnership, right? Because a lot of tax dollars are used, as we've seen here in Springfield, uh, your tax dollars used to uh, further consolidate rail uh, so that uh, we can all have better ease of movement throughout. But uh, it's also, you know, the rail companies are private. Uh, and uh, they, they have to they make moves to, to stay afloat to better invest in their operations as well. So we'll see how all that goes uh, with the, the merger, but also the continued rail consolidation efforts in the city of Springfield. It is Springfield's Morning News. I'm Greg Bishop on 92.7 WMAY, Springfield's News and Talk. And a reminder, you can donate to my Real Men Wear Pink campaign Go to WMAY.com slash pink. We've already raised over $600, and I, quite frankly, I'm I'm just, again, the momentum we had last year, I wasn't sure we'd get it this year, but it seems that uh, we are picking up the pace. Uh, so do what you can to donate, all right? I seeded that with $250. We've seen... $25 donation, $50 donation, and it uh, it's just incredible. And we even had a, a $250 donation uh, uh, yesterday. So uh, we'll, we'll, of course, highlight uh, all of that and more throughout the uh, program and all throughout the month of October. WMAY.com slash pink. Real men wear pink. And I just realized I... I'm not wearing pink. To, I'll confess, I'm not wearing pink today, but I will go and uh, put on some pink uh, when I get back to the home office. Uh, all right, so WMAY.com slash pink. Help me raise funds and awareness for breast cancer research and support for those who get that debilitating diagnosis of breast cancer. But we can beat it together. So go to WMAY.com slash pink and donate today. All right, stay tuned. Much more coming up here with Springfield's Morning News. We're just getting 